and welcome back to Flashpoint with our special Republican host today, sitting in for Kirk, floor leader John Eccles, representative from Oklahoma City, Republican. And joining us now is Representative Mickey Dollins from Oklahoma City as well, Democrat. And uh, you guys are working together now. How's that going? Well, I've been enjoying it. Uh, I tell you what, I started off on the bobsledding team, like you said earlier, and lately people have been asking me what the legislature has been like, and it actually has been quite like the bobsledding team. There's a lot of twists and turns and bumps and bruises, and right now we're going downhill fast, and that's one of the things I want to talk about today is the budget. I'm concerned about that, and we ran campaigns on fixing education yeah. and helping rural hospitals and mental health, and we've got to come up with a solution really fast. That's How's right. this guy doing? I know he's uh, on the opposite side of the political. Yeah. No, no, I want to brag on Mickey before we get into this and start disagreeing. I got you. So, I got so, you. I got you. Representative Dollins and I are both from South Oklahoma City, and I've said this to you before. Okay. You will not find a man of better character than Representative Dollins. Well, I mean, he, nice. right, he represents right. his area well. Now, we disagree. We're going to disagree some today, yeah. but I tell you what, I have the utmost respect for this man. And you both like Flashpoint. You watch every Sunday? Every Sunday. Okay. Yeah, we do. Every Sunday. <laughs> if you ain't giving you any love. Oh, he's a person like me. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, he's stealing my material, Kevin. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Give a grow, but you keep a loose. That's a Flashpoint. I told you guys he was good. Yeah, that's fine. Right. You're both he, good. This is the best. The you young you mentioned just real quick here the bobsled team, because I talked about it before the break. Yeah, you did. How did all this happen? Well, I played college football at Southern Methodist University, and I tried out for the NFL, and I was recruited to the Olympic bobsledding team. I got a call from the head coach. I went up to our training center in Lake Placid, New York, and I, I gave that a spin for a few years, and I came back to Oklahoma City. I became a roughneck. I worked on the oil rigs for a while, the drilling rigs, and then oil took a downturn, and I decided to become a teacher, and I taught for about a year and a half, and then I was furloughed in the education budget cuts. Thanks, John. I'm here because of you. We're, we're digging deep. Well, all right. Before you Forget all those things I said. No, yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. Before you started, U.S. Grand High School. Absolutely. Where Susan Turpin, my wife, was teaching. And they had a lot of respect for me. Or Eileen Eppelstock. I know that. And I gotta give a lot of credit to Susan for putting up with you, Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she deserves it. Patience yeah. is a virtue. Yeah. Yeah. Wife of the Year Award. No, no, no doubt yeah. about that. Sure. Okay, start right. up. guys. We've got. Uh, well, obviously, everybody knows we got problems with the budget. Yep. Um, Let's talk a little bit about some of the ideas that are being floated right now. First, something that was in the paper. A lot, a lot Headlines. Of people, if you don't follow politics, you may not quite get it first state house advances bill to end tax cut trigger john what is a tax cut trigger what the tax cut trigger was is two years ago before the downturn in the economy and oil we passed a two-tiered tax structure that was based upon how much revenues went up compared to the prior year well if we didn't pass this trigger if we didn't get rid of this trigger i should say if revenues went up next year an immediate tax cut would have gone into place well the problem with that is the citizens of Oklahoma, in their wisdom, have created a rainy day fund. And if revenues go up, constitutionally, that money is going back into the rainy day fund. Not for the tax cut. Not for the tax cut. And it, it makes sense. What we're saying is we're not done. We're not done with the low-tax state. I think if you're a Republican or a Democrat, you want a low-tax state in the state of, state of Oklahoma. We're not done with that process, but now is not the time. How about the tax trigger, that issue? Well, I think it's a, 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 the path down the right. It's, it's the right choice right now. But, however, when things start to pick up and get better again, we can't start rolling back back taxes again. We need to save. We need to put money into the into the rainy day fund. We need to build that up. But I think the real conversation that people want to have is looking and reevaluating the gross production tax. I know that my constituents are asking for it. And since your district neighbor is mine, yeah. I know yours must be asking for it too. And all that I ask is that we put it on the floor for the sake of discussion. Let's talk about what the gross production tax is. It is the tax on the oil and gas industry. Yeah, it is the tax we pay on oil and gas that comes out of the ground. And, and I think what's important, and here's the difference though, what I would like to that, see that is... That the oil and gas industry pays the state. Pays the state, yeah, state right. oil that comes out of the ground. He wants them to pay more. Yeah, and, what, I hear. and what I want to do is balance it. I'd like to restore Mm. Yeah, you want to restore to seven. What what I wish we would right focus now it's on. A two. Yeah, it's a two. Right. It's, it's a two, then goes to seven. Go ahead. That's right. And and I think the GPT is a red herring. I think what we need to do is fund a teacher pay raise and fund the budget. Oh, my so gosh. Is the teacher pay raise? Absolutely. Okay, keep I, going. I've, I've been pretty clear. Okay, keep I, going. I, as majority floor leader, am going to put a bill on the floor that will fund the teacher pay raise and will fund the budget. Two, but four, six. Here's what's hard. Here's what's difficult. Members are going to have to decide, do they want their plan or do they want a plan? There's 101 members in the House of Representatives. There's 101 deals. And, I, by the way, I promise you, gentlemen, the deal I put on the floor will not be my first choice. But it will be the deal that can pass. And what I'm hoping we do, Representative Dolan's, 
is we do what's right for the state of Oklahoma, and even if it's not our pet issue, whatever that pet issue is, we pass what it takes to fund state government and to fund the teacher pay rate. Have you seen John's idea? Well, there's not one. And, and you're, a few, you're a former teacher. Yes, so. and I'd like to respond to that. Yeah. By, we have taken and are restoring Oklahoma plans, a House Democrats plan. We've taken ideas from your side, which is mm -hmm. a cigarette tax. We've even taken some of the proposals set forth by Governor Fallon. We've taken 30 of the uh, service taxes that we feel don't put the burden on working class Oklahomans. And then we've also combined that with ours. It will bring in a recurring $1.4 billion to fund public education, to reinstore the earned income tax credit, and to help sir, uh, help fuel essential core services in our government. What, what, what besides the gross production tax, some of the other services that, need, that you feel need to be taxed? Your, your source of revenue, go ahead and oh, identify. The service taxes, there's yeah. um, oil How are you going to raise 1.4 billion? Well, uh, if you go to okdem, okdemocrats.org, we lay out the whole plan. Okay. It's very it's very meticulous. We've looked at it for months. We've come up with the plan. And right now, there are two people who have brought who are in the ballgame right now. Governor Fallon has presented her plan. House Democrats have presented ours. So you're telling me everything on that list, if we pick something from that list and I put it on the board, you'll vote for it? We'll, we'll contribute. We'll, we'll talk. We would just no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I said if, if I take something off your list, I put it on the board, will you vote for it? Well, it depends. If you're just going to put a regressive tax like a gasoline or a cigarette tax, out there and that's it that's going to be very tough but if you put something more substantial something that's recurring something that's actually going to make a difference in the long run then we could have those conversations well, we agree both those let's take those for example both those are obviously recurring i mean that they hit that mark and when you talk about gross production tax there are 46 million dollars in other tax breaks we give to the oil and gas industry we actually pay oil and gas producers not to produce oil and gas it's the craziest thing i've ever seen I don't understand why the love affair with increasing the gross production tax. What it appears to me is that it's not about balancing the budget, not on your side, Representative Dolans, but a little more about how do we get the gross production tax. Yeah. I would be interested if we could look at maybe some of those 46 million in reoccurring revenue that are just giveaways that make no benefit. Yes, I'm sure to that. you can respond. We're not picking completely on oil and gas. We've also pulled the uh, tax you're, break. You're a former employee in the oil patch. Right, exactly. I know what it is. I'm a fifth generation Oklahoman. My grandfather, my great grandfather, right. and my dad have all worked for Phillips 66. I understand how important energy is to our economy. However, we're not only picking on oil and gas. We've also pulled the tax credit on wind energy. Now, when you say you pulled the tax credit on wind, though, you guys wanted to pull it back December 31st which would cost the state an additional $500 million. The Republican plan, which was signed by the governor, pulled it back July 1st. So when you say you want to end when, we wanted to end when. The Democrat plan wanted to extend it another six months. And you made how much money off of that? Well, for next year's budget or this year's? This year's budget made no money on it because okay. we had fit, stopped at next July 1st. Next year's budget will be? It would have cost $500 million additional dollars over the life of 10 years if we would have went to December 31st. Okay, I think an important point to make is I was in the legislature last year. You weren't the House floor leader last year. People want to have the, the, the discussion of the gross production tax. And if it doesn't pass, fine. Let it pass or die on its own merit. But to not even have the conversation for the f sake of democracy and discussion is, a, is, is an unjust... Cigarette tax. Situation. Do we both agree on a cigarette tax? I can. I voted for it. Okay. I'll tell you about the cigarette tax. Okay. It's only earmarked to help health care for one year. Why not make it earmarked for the entirety of the cigarette tax? I'm just concerned that we're trying to feed them a, a false hope by saying we're going to help out health care, which is earmarked, earmarked for one year, and then it's going to go directly back to the general revenue. The, the governor's plan is the cigarette tax for one year. That's what it says right no, now. No, no, it's a cigarette tax for health care for one year, right. then the general revenue fund mm -hmm. every year after. Then it goes you have a lot that. of health care professionals who are really pushing it, but it's only going to help them out for one year. We're going to have a teacher pay raise. How are we going to pay for it? We're going to answer that yet. <laughs> you, you, both, you both believe there'll be a teacher pay raise. We'll, find out. Pay raise we'll find out. Right. We'll come back with our special guest here on Flashpoint. <laughs> back on Flashpoint with our special guest sitting in for Kirk today on some Republican Voices. <laughs> House floor leader John Eccles is here, Republican. Mm -hmm been on the show before and we're glad to have with us on his maiden voyage uh, Loving it. Democrat Mickey Dolan. He's doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really good job. Well. Happy to have him. You were a teacher. Your mother was a teacher. Yeah. Uh, everybody has a connection to a teacher. You do. Yes, I do. Yeah. We were all taught by a teacher. Many yeah. and my mother. Family, yeah. my, I have family members that were teachers. What do we do to get them more money to keep them from leaving the state? Well, the Republicans have rolled out a plan which has got Democrat support on the plan. Now, the, the funding is where we disagree. It's a one, two, three plan. 1,000 this year, 2,000 next year, 3,000 the year after. At the end of that three-year period with a $6,000 teacher pay raise, we will have the highest starting teacher salary in the, in the uh, region. region and the highest benefits in the region. As a result of that, what we got to do is finish the plan. How do you fund it? Right. And that's the, the dichotomy I want to make right now. Your newly elected officials, 25 Republicans, 7 
Democrats in the House, we all ran our platforms on essentially the same thing, which is helping education, helping rural hospitals, mental health. And we know that that costs money. And for the first time in eight years, the governor said, we don't have a spending problem, we have a revenue problem. If you juxtapose that with many legislators on your side of the aisle who have ran in years past on the old adage of ways, fraud, and abuse, and have actually signed a pledge to never raise a single penny in taxes, it puts a real stranglehold on John's job. And there are 35 House Republicans who have signed it. John's not one of them. But I feel for you because your job's got to be extremely tough trying to convince people to put their constituents first before their next primary elections. Well, I think what you're going to see happen, though, on the budget is you cannot, you're not going to raise $800 million worth of taxes. That's not going to happen. You're going to have to have somehow, you're going to have to have some cuts. Everybody's got to tighten their belt. we got to remember, when the economy and the state, when the state revenues are down, it's because the economies are down. It means families are hurting. So we've got to look for efficiencies wherever we can. But then we also have to be realistic. You're also not going to have $800 million worth of cuts. And that's why I've called for people being for what they can be for, not for what they, their little pet project. I mean, for example, I wish you were on the sub A and B committee because we went right out of the gate. What's the sub A and B committee? The, I'm sorry, the full A and B, the full appropriations and budgets committee. Okay. The Republicans went right out of the gate with an aggressive cigarette tax, which was resoundingly not supported by your party. And what most people don't know is, while we have super majorities in the House, Republicans can't raise taxes on their own. They can't raise any revenue on their own. It takes three-quarter vote. So it's going to have to be by the, Democrats by constitution. by constitution. It has to be Democrats and Republicans voting together. And what will be interesting is the Republicans, I'm first to say, the Republicans have to give. The Republicans have to give some. But the Democratic Party can't say, the only thing I'll do is what's in my plan. No. And that's that's not giving. They've got, they're going to have to give something. Oh, we'll absolutely vote, vote for your plan if we can give something more substantial. Because if, you were, if we vote on solely a cigarette tax, you're looking at about $154 million. And obviously people are going to stop smoking. So then that's a non-recurring revenue. But if we can get something bigger, if we can bundle something better for the uh, good of Oklahoma, then we're right there with you. And we've taken some of your ideas, some of the governor's ideas, and anyone else who wants to propose ideas, but let's talk about it. Let's at least put it on the floor. And I would also say that on the gross production tax, we only need 51 votes. So let's, let's remember, we're not actually raising taxes. This is restoring. Historically, it's been 7%. We dropped it from 1%. Um, two years ago, they voted on it to put it up to 2%. That took 51 votes. So theoretically, we could get there. And I think that if you put it on the floor, I really think that you're uh, a lot of the my class of freshman Republicans would vote on that. I think we'd get it 51 easily. Now, I strongly disagree with you, though, it requires 51 votes. The Constitution is clear. Anything that cre increases revenue raises taxes. You have to have three-quarter majority. That's a permanent tax rate. It's a little... I, I know your side's been Did saying Did you say that. restoring? Yeah, restoring restoring. Because well, 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 we did it in 2014. The, 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 restoring is still yeah. raising revenue. Constitution's crystal oh, clear. Yeah. We can't get around it. It requires the 76. 2 percent permanent tax rate. Come on, be We're creative. Be creative. You're an attorney. I am being creative. Uh, $46 million in giveaways. I would like to give my caucus uh, credit for being one of the strongest minority caucuses in the <laughs> entire country. I mean, if you want, uh, we, we, will, we will vote for your cigarette tax and, and whatever, but we need something more substantial. We need something recurring, something that will actually keep yep. teachers in the state and keep, and keep more teachers from being laid off like I was. Or cigarette Trump. gas tax, $46 million against oil and gas. Would you guys vote for that? Say that again. Cigarette gas tax taking $46 million in tax giveaways away from oil and gas. Would you guys support that? Two out of the three are on your plan. I, I can't say about the gasoline tax. I mean, that's... Uh, it's, it's but we got to give. we got to give but some. Yeah. If, if you're talking about restoring gross production tax to 7%, yes. Okay, so, hey, I want to shift gears real quick. <laughs> Oklahoma's problem. We could have fun all day. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you guys do <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. And, and you, make it, left. you make it understandable. I appreciate that. You really do. Okay, okay. Oklahoma's promise. One of the best... Access to college programs in all of America. It's the 25th change, anniversary right. of Oklahoma's Promise. Go ahead, John. It's amazing. We got a bill on the floor. We have to strengthen. We have to strengthen higher education in Oklahoma's Promise. Big time support. I think it's Go a ahead. wonderful idea. The only problem is how we're going to pay for it. So yeah. Look at the Restoring Oklahoma Plan. We're going to work with you. We're going to get something done. We have 22 days left in the session. Can he, I believe you will. Well, but Kenny Hinkie has you. a uh, has a plan on the table right now. I'm putting Rep it on the floor on Tuesday. Representative Rep Hinkie's plan on the floor on Tuesday. Yes. Right, for increasing. Oklahoma's promise. Yes. So more kids can go to the college in this state for free. Tuition. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see how that works out. Representative Dollins, thank you so much for being thank with you. us. We yeah. appreciate it. Good job. Appreciate Good job. it, my friends. Appreciate yeah, you thank watching, you too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll have you back on the big The young guns. Program. I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the we'll future right, of the parties. We'll be right back with a picture you, you might not believe. It's coming up next.